The Mouse, the Bird, and the Sausage, from the Tales of the Brothers Grimm. There was once a little mouse, a little bird, and a sausage who formed a partnership. They had set up housekeeping and had lived for a long time in great harmony together. The duty of the little bird was to fly every day into the forest and bring home wood. The mouse had to draw water to light the fire and lay the tablecloth. And the sausage was the cook. How often when we are comfortable we begin to long for something new. So it happened one day that the little bird had met in his road another bird to which he had boasted of their happiness and friendship at home. The other bird replied scornfully, What a poor little simpleton you are to work in the way you do while the other two are enjoying themselves at home. When the mouse has lighted the fire and drawn the water, she can go and rest in her little room till she is called to lay the cloth. The sausage can sit by the stove while he watches that the dinner is well cooked, and when the dinner time arrives he devours four times as much as the others and broth of vegetables till he quite shines with salt and fat. The bird, after listening to this, came home quite disconcerted, and laying down his load seated himself at the table, and ate so much and filled his crop so full that he slept till the next morning without waking and thought this was a happy life. The next day the little bird objected to go and fetch wood, saying that he had been their servant long enough, and that he had been a fool to work for them in this way. He intended at once to make a change and seek his living in another way. After this, although the mouse and the sausage were both in a rage, the bird was master and would have his own way. So he proposed that they should draw lots, and the lots fell so that the sausage was to fetch the wood, the house was to be the cook, and the bird to draw the water. Now what was the consequence of all this? The sausage went out to get wood, the bird lighted the fire, and the mouse put on the saucepan, and sat down to watch it till the sausage returned home with the wood for the next day. But he stayed away so long that the bird, who wanted a breath of fresh air, went out to look for him. On his way he met a dog, who told him that, Having met with the sausage and considering him as his lawful prey, he had devoured him. The bird complained greatly against the dog for his conduct and called him a cruel robber, but it did no good. For, said the dog, the sausage had false papers with him, and therefore his life was forfeit to society. The little bird, full of sorrow, flew home, carrying the wood with him, and related to the mouse what he had seen and heard. They were both very grieved, but quickly agreed that the best thing for them to do was to remain together. From that time the bird undertook to prepare the table, and the mouse to roast something for supper, and to put the vegetables into the saucepan, as she had seen the sausage do. But before she had half finished her task, the fire burnt her so terribly that she fell down and died. When the little bird came home, expected to find something to eat, there was no cook to be seen, and the fire was nearly out. The bird, in alarm, threw the wood here and there, cried out and searched everywhere, but no cook could be found. Meanwhile, the spark from the fire fell on the wood and set it in a blaze, so that there was danger of the house being burnt. The bird ran in haste to the well for water. Unfortunately, he let the pail fall into the well, and being dragged after it, he sank into the water and was drowned. And all this happened because one little bird listened to another who was jealous of the happy little family at home. And from being discontented and changing their arrangements, they all met with their death. The Singing Bone from the Tales of the Brothers Grimm there was once in a country great trouble about a wild boar who attacked the peasants in the fields and had killed and torn to pieces several men with his tusks. The king of the country promised a large reward to anyone who would free the land from this plague. But the animal was so large and strong that no man would even venture near the forest where he lived. At last the king made a proclamation that he would give his only daughter in marriage to any man who would bring the wild boar to him, dead 
or alive. There lived two brothers in that country, the sons of a poor man, who gave notice of their readiness to enter on this perilous undertaking. The eldest, who was clever and crafty, was influenced by pride. The youngest, who was innocent and simple, offered himself from kindness of heart. Thereupon the king advised that as the best and safest way would be to take opposite directions in the wood, the eldest was to go in the evening and the youngest in the morning. The youngest had not gone far when a little fairy stepped up to him. He held in his hand a black spear and said, I will give you this spear because your heart is innocent and good. With this you can go out and discover the wild boar and he shall not be able to harm you. He thanked the little man, took the spear, placed her on his shoulder, and without delay went farther into the forest. It was not long before he espied the animal coming towards him, and fiercely making ready to spring. But the youth stood still, and held the spear firmly in front of him. In wild rage the, beers, the fierce beast ran violently towards him, and was met by the spear on the point of which he threw himself, and as it pierced him to the heart, he fell dead. Then the youngster took the dead monster on his shoulder and went to find his brother. As he approached the other side of the wood where stood a large hall, he heard music and found a number of people dancing, drinking wine, and making merry. His eldest brother was amongst them, for he thought the wild boar would not run far away, and he wished to get up his courage for the evening by cheerful company and wine. When he caught sight of his youngest brother coming out of the forest laden with his booty, the most restless jealousy and malice rose in his heart. But he disguised his bitter feelings and spoke kindly to his brother and said, Come in and stay with us, dear brother, and rest a while, and get up your strength by a cup of wine. So the youth, not suspecting anything wrong, carried the dead boar into his brother's house and told him of the little man he had met in the wood who had given him the spear, and how he had killed the wild animal. The elder brother persuaded him to stay and rest till the evening, and then they went out together in the twilight, and walked by the river till it became quite dark. A little bridge lay across the river over which they had to pass, and the eldest brother let the young one go before him. When they arrived at the middle of the stream, the wicked man gave his youngest brother a blow from behind, and he fell down dead instantly. But fearing he might not be quite dead, he threw the body over the bridge into the river, and through the clear water saw it sink into the sand. After this wicked deed he ran home quickly, took the dead wild boar on his shoulders, and carried it to the king, with the pretense that he had killed the animal, and that therefore he could claim the princess as his wife, according to the king's promise. But these dark deeds are not often concealed, for something happens to bring them to light. Not many years after, a herdsman, passing over the bridge with his flock, saw beneath him in the sand a little bone as white as snow, and thought that it would make a very nice mouthpiece for his horn. As soon as they had passed over the bridge, he waded into the middle of the stream, for the water was very shallow, took up the bone and carried it home to make a mouthpiece. But the first time he blew the horn after the bone was in, it filled with the herdsmen with wonder and amazement, for it began to sing of itself, and these were the words it sang. Ah, dear shepherd, you are blowing your horn with one of my bones, which night and morn lie still unburied beneath the wave where I was thrown in the sandy grave. I killed the boar and my brother slew me and gained the princess by pretending t'was he. What a wonderful horn, said the shepherd, that can sing of itself. I must take it to my lord the king. As soon as the horn was brought before the king and blown by the shepherd, it at once began to sing the same song in the same words. The king was at first surprised, but his suspicion being aroused, he ordered that the sand under the bridge should be examined immediately, and then the entire skeleton of the murdered man was discovered, 
and the whole wicked deed came to light. The wicked brother could not deny the deed. He was therefore ordered to be tied in a sack and drowned, while the remains of his murdered brother were carefully carried to the churchyard and laid to rest in a beautiful grave. The End